This is Stewart at SHOT Show 2015. We're down in the catacombs of the SHOT Show conference, and I couldn't help but notice that Alessi Holsters is apparently in business. I wasn't sure when I came over, but I'm very happy to say I was able to meet Tom. How you doing, brother? Stuart, how are you? Well, I'm doing Great very to see well. You. Thank you. Well, we've had a little chat here. We've been talking for probably about a good 15 minutes. And uh, of course, uh, you've had a couple of customers show up. And uh, frankly, I, when I walked over, uh, I wasn't sure if it was the same company or maybe somebody refurbishing or what have you. You've educated me a little bit here. You're still in business. Matter of fact, you were uh, with Lou back when I made my first couple of phone calls in the, uh, well, we won't go into too much yeah, detail, yeah, but in the you early 80s. you have to make 80s. me feel that old? <laughs> hey, brother, it's just a number. It's just a number, and that's all it is. Um, in any event, I, I'd like you to just give me a little uh, snapshot, you know, about the origins of the company. I talked to Lou a few times on the telephone when he was alive and well. I uh, made my first couple of orders. Matter of fact, I think I still have a box of stuff. There's only one that I know is missing. This particular model here That's is very, is very uh, familiar to me, except mine is a little smaller because uh, uh, this particular one with the pull-through snaps is for a Daytonics Mark IV. I understand that you are a, a Daytonics fan as well. I carry a Daytonics every day in one of our holsters because you just can't beat a 45. See? That's my nickname. <laughs> and that is, uh, you said that that's, a that's from a photograph of your pistol. That is exactly my pistol. Your nickname's Tommy45. Huh? Nickname. I'm going to just take it from there. You're absolutely. <laughs> and we're not talking about uh, Colt 45 malt liquor. We're talking about 45 ACP out of a Daytonic. Now Daytonics. you're dating yourself. <laughs> I'm sure that's still around. In any event, uh, you've got a, a number oh. of holsters here. These are same design. And, uh, and again, just if you would, just uh, you know, educate us uh, a little bit about the origins of the company. I spoke to Mr. Alessi, Lou, uh, at least several times uh, in the, you know, back when I would order my holsters. It would take a little while to, to get them, but you know, I would wait and boom, it was a great product. And like I said, my, uh, my leather gear from him is, is still functioning just fine, except for one piece that uh, didn't do so well with a little excess of moisture for a, an extended period of time. So, when did the company get started? Okay, and just well, give me your background. Louis started the company. It's actually his first holster was actually made in 1975. So this year we're celebrating 40 years of Alessi holsters. This is the 40th anniversary of the of the company. That's correct. So when Louis started, it was all everything was done by hand. All the leather was cut, all the leather was sewn, everything was done by hand. No machines at all with no the machines, stitching? None whatsoever. Uh, when, up until what kind of period of time? Late 70s. Late 70s, okay. Yep. So, what happened was, is, is, is that we found some great sewing machines and, uh, and had lots of help from the Amish people, as a matter of fact, because they were using these machines for stitching leather saddlery for their horses. Mm -hmm. So we were able to glean enough information, and now we have the same processes today, where we make each and every holster by hand, one at a time, no mass production. There's only two machines that actually touch your holster. One is the machine now that cuts the leather, and two is the sewing machine that puts your holster together. So, we are today... Now, is that automated, or is that... No. You're too, literally talking about a machine that you're using your hands to manipulate the leather and the holster and the you know the, the, the stitching. Everything is done by hand. Okay. The only machine that touches your holster is the needle that actually puts the leather in or puts the thread into the holster. Very good. Or the, the, the edge of the blade that is cutting the leather. That's correct. Okay. Everything else is by hand. All of the lining, all of the edging, all of the trimming, everything is done by hand one piece of leather at a time. Now, you folks still in uh, New Buffalo. York, right? Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Go ahead, ask me about the snow. <laughs> now, let's talk about the holsters and the leather gear. Okay. So, so up until, and then up until the late 70s, Lou's doing this strictly by himself. Well, were you helping him at that time? I was. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the early days, there, there really wasn't enough orders to have two full-time people. So, Louie, 
did everything by himself. I would always help or assist whenever I could, but I always had another job. As time went on, and we, we got to become a subcontractor for the federal government, which we still are today, um, we were able to obtain some larger police department government orders, which we still do today. Um, that's when we started to get into you know, having it be more of a real business. Right. Now, you're not talking individual officers or agents. You're talking about agency purchases. That's correct. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, today we still do large government contracts. Uh, I just finished an order for the Saudi Arabian government. We send ulcers all over the world. But what's important to know is, is that our process today is the exact same process as it was back in 1975 when Louis started the company. We still do everything by hand. We still have all of the original designs, the patterns, the dyes, the equipment, the machinery. Everything is the same today as it was 40 years ago. Beautiful, beautiful. The only thing that's a little different today is that you can get your holster a little faster than <laughs> six or eight months. Yeah, I think I waited a little while for my first, and then when I, uh, he, he was pretty excited when I made my second order because it was, uh, it was uh, several, it was uh, quite a few pieces. <laughs> So now, but I think it took a little longer for that to do, too. Uh, so now today, the reason that you don't have to wait as long is simply because it's still a family-owned and operated business. But now my daughter, my son-in-law, we have more and more people, actually both daughters, uh, we have more and more people now that are actually interested in enjoy making leather, except think of the way Louis did when he started it, because it was really a labor of love. He Beautiful. Just, he so just, now you've got more people, basically you've got more hands on deck, so to speak, correct. to help get get, get uh, holsters finished, manufactured. So can you give me a rough estimate of like what a typical turnaround time? If I were to call you on the telephone, which, you know, we would do that old school, of course, sure. and we'd have to talk a little bit about the weather and, you know, whatever, maybe uh, the, the popular beer of the time. And uh, uh, if I were to make a phone call to you in Buffalo today, what kind of an ETA do you think I might have to get a holster? Say, as an example, if I needed to reorder one of these, and I can't remember this model number or the, the name, it's an inside the waistband style. Um, if I were to order that today and you were in New York, when do you think I might receive it? Well, here's the interesting thing about that. I have to give you two answers, because I currently try to keep around 200 holsters in stock for immediate delivery. So Which I don't think is anything you ever really did. <laughs> no. <laughs> so depending on what style of holster, what model gun you're trying to get the holster for, I may have it in stock, it would ship tomorrow. If I typically had to make one for you, we're running right now about six to 10 weeks, assuming we have no problems through the production process of your holster. Now, that will mean that every holster has a minimum of 18 different production processes as it moves around the shop. We are here to give you a quality product. If we have a problem with your holster or with the leather through any one of the production processes that we feel would make the holster inferior or not what you expect to get from us, we would cut up that leather and start all over again. So there could be a delay because of that. And just to kind of highlight the point about uh, about the quality, you know, I'm no leather maker. You know, I just use the use the product. But you can see the stitching here is aligned just very well. And here we've got another inside the waistband holster. What model is this, by the way? This is outside. This is called oh, this the is C. Yep, that's called the CQCS. Okay. That's our most popular I was number one was, selling. I was thinking it was inside because of uh, of this material to help. Uh, and of course, that's for aesthetics. That's Stingray. Yeah, yeah but I was also thinking it was <laughs> yep. for wear because I know uh, you know Lou was always very much about form and function, not just aesthetics. Yeah, is, so uh, we've got the Stingray here. But this would be completely on the outside, as evidenced by the way the loops are set up. Correct. And, and this holster, uh, we're talking a little bit about it. This holster is the number one selling outside the waistband holster for a couple of specific reasons. One, when you want to put it on, you don't have to take your pants off to put your gun on. You just simply snap it on your belt with one-way locking military-style snaps. 
when you snap this onto your belt, it pulls the gun into your body, so it stays nice and tight. It also rides a little higher on your hip. Right. So, adds to the comfort, the concealability. It's just a great holster. And quite frankly, I'll just kind of go back, and, and again, I'm, I'm uh, it, it's, it's fun to see this one. With uh, this inside the waistband holster, these snaps, function uh, very well with, again, you don't have to take your belt off. You take this off, slide the holster under your pants, your belt is under here too. Now you snap this and you're in place. And again, this style with the uh, squared uh, shape of the holster prints very, strike that, it doesn't print, it doesn't print on, under your pants. Uh, is what I'm trying to say. And of course, this is a, something else a lot of people may not have seen, is the pull-through snap, say on a 1911 design, or in my case, uh, a, a Daytonix, which is not uh, basically it's a 1911 design. As you draw the, the pistol, the snaps just come through. You don't have to even, well, you could probably break it, but you don't need to do a thumb break with your thumb. You just nope. pull on the, on the grip of the pistol and it's loose. What happens is, is, is that this holster is extremely comfortable for any style of firearm. As this leather gets supple and it molds around your hip, it distributes the weight of the gun over a wider space. But so it's weight distribution too, not just, okay, I didn't know. It's comfort and concealability. Yeah. So when you get this around your belt, And this is anchored inside your waist. When you go to draw that gun, it's super easy, very fast. So when you're trying to take care of business and make sure you get home at night, great holster. But You've had one for 30 years, so you know. Yeah, I, 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 I can. Well, for what it, for what it's worth, I can personally attest to what Tom just said. Uh, th this, uh, again, it's, a, it's an older design, but it just, you know, it, it, it goes and goes, and I still have it. I still have my original. Um, now, so there's just you know, one more thing. Go ahead. We're not going to reference how long you've had your holsters because you've made me feel old enough today. <laughs> well, no, no, no I, I didn't mean that, but uh, <laughs> good point, good point, Tom. All right. Uh, but now so, the, the, back, so back to the company. Yeah, getting back to so, the company. Uh, so when Louis started and, uh, and, uh, uh, and understanding that there was a way to make a great quality holster that would last a lifetime, you know, Louis instituted guaranteeing the holsters for life. We do that today. When you purchase a holster from us, it's guaranteed for life. If you break a snap, pop a clip, a thread pulls out, whatever. Anything that has to do with the workmanship or the quality of the holster, you send it back to me and I'm gonna repair or replace it at no charge to you. Okay. Because we do everything to your leather, just as Louis did when we started. We dye each piece individually. We hand cut Sky, line, wax, trim, one at a time. We know exactly what goes into that holster. There are, um, and again, you've got, you know, we've got, we've got a full range of pistol holsters, full range of revolver holsters. Again, I can attest to that, revolver and pistol. Every one of the holsters, form and function is just beautiful. Want to hear something scary? Go ahead. We have 23 different styles of holsters that we make. Right. Inside, outside, shoulder, ankle. When, uh, when, after Louis passed away, and when we moved to a larger facility and added more machines and people, we had to get a new accounting system. <laughs> My accountants actually made me nervous because when we entered the 23 different styles of holsters, and then we looked at all of the different manufacturers and all of the individual models that the, each of the manufacturers make, we have 
a little over 126,000 different SKU numbers. So there's 126,000 different ways to make one of our holsters. And that's outside of the range of material, you know, of different materials, etc. We're talking correct. just the basic holster itself. Just the basic holster with all the different manufacturers and models. Now, I want to add something about, in essence, you know, the, the credibility of the holster itself. I know personally, it just is, you know, above and beyond. But the credibility of the company, I'm going to just make a very quick reference to this. Uh, you know, after Lou passed away, unfortunately, in 2009, you told me, I'm not going to go into detail, you made a reference earlier about there were uh, a number of orders that had, had yet to have been filled. Uh, I'm going to take you at your word about the story, but in spite of no obligation, no legal obligation, you filled those orders. I'm not going to give the number, but it, quite frankly, it was a pretty staggering number that you mentioned. All but two. There were two people that... Uh, we had found orders that uh, that dated back to 2004. It took uh, it took me about two years to fill all of those orders because we we're still getting new orders. Right. Uh, but we filled well, all those Well, thank God orders. you were getting new orders because you'd have to pay for the materials to make the old orders. <laughs> yeah, but we did. Uh, we were able to fill all of the orders, but two. And, uh, and that was because they were you couldn't locate those people. Couldn't couldn't locate them. Undeliverable. And remember, I'm a subcontractor for the federal government. I could find anybody if I really had to couldn't find two people yeah God for maybe they're in a better spot but yeah yeah okay yeah. so again that kind of goes to the credibility of the company um, personally that's something that means something to me I'm sure that there's a lot of other uh, uh, men and women that would uh, you know find that interesting and uh, take that to, to heart as well well it, it's a uh, uh, story it's kind of like this uh, you and I are from an era of uh, Moral responsibility. Um, well, it depends on who you're talking well, to. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, people ask me all the time, can I help you? And I said, you know, if you ask my wife, she'll tell you I'm way beyond help. But um, in today's world, um, it, it's not uncommon to see the younger generation do things a little differently. Good, not good, bad, or indifferent. I come from a different world. Um, reputation. My father always taught me, you come into this world with your word, that's the only thing you take out. Everything you do in between all reflects on your word. So, I tell my kids who are now in the business, the product is going to stand on its own. Customer service is what separates you from the next guy. So, treat people the right way. Do the right thing and you'll never have to worry about where dinner's coming from tomorrow. So, I thank God every day for my family, my friends, my health, and our business. Beautiful words from Uncle Tom. <laughs> Uncle There's Tommy. Nothing more important. Uncle, no, no, Uncle Tommy 45. Uncle Tommy 45. <laughs> hey, now, I just want to point out, too. Yep. Your phone number, you still take phone orders? Absolutely. 716-932-7497. You've got an email, tom at alessigunholsters.com. And then the website, of course, uh, alessigunholsters.com. And still in thriving business, brother. Thank you very much. Strong. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks for stopping by. Great to see you. I hope you have a great show. I'll be talking to you real soon, I Travel think. safe. And you as well. you got a little, little distance to go home. It's not snowing. Yeah, there you go. Take care, brother. All right, thanks, Stuart.